Good evening. What's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here jumping on with a uh, quick update video for tonight. Wednesday, May 12th, 2021, about almost 8.30 p.m. West Coast time here in California. The latest quake, a 2.8. Out here, it looks like right around southeast Texas area, eastern Texas, or uh, Oklahoma, I mean, right there on the globe. It's been a pretty active day over the uh, Pacific parts of the uh, Pacific Plate today. Quite a bit of movement going on up there along the uh, uh, Aleutian Islands and into areas along the northwest part of the Pacific Plate. You can see that in a little bit more detail right here on this USGS map showing all the uh, significant movement uh, throughout the day over the last 24 hours. Of course, that... Uh, 6.7 quake still showing up out there in the Indian Ocean. Uh, that should be dropping off here pretty soon, I believe. <clears throat> uh, but other than that, uh, most of the activity, as I mentioned up here, just off the Aleutian Islands into the Pacific Rim, uh, Pacific Plate area, the Aleutian Trench. I've seen a 5.1 in this area along with a couple smaller quakes. Uh, looks like, I believe, a couple up, upper fours. 3.8 and uh, what else we had a 4.8 just to the south of the larger one that 5.1 also over here towards the uh, uh, um, <clears throat> west hopefully my voice can hold through <laughs> we had this uh, another 5.1 in this region and down here to the south of Japan uh, almost 5 pointer 4.9 a couple deep earthquakes right here this one was pretty deep uh, about 107 kilometers below the surface. Uh, so some, some movement, some, some uh, deep movement taking place up here to the north. Uh, a little bit of movement down here south here, a little bit earlier, 5.5 near the Indonesia Islands area. And also some further movement here in this little bend. Some more deep movement, including this pretty deep, I mean, that's a pretty deep earthquake, 557 on the kilometer scale. For the 4.3 in this area where it's no doubt sees the world's deepest earthquakes i believe uh looking over here towards uh at least north of the indian ocean area we did have this little quake <coughs> way earlier uh looks like around the iran region pretty close there um yeah about about 10 kilometers below the surface for this little 4.6. Taking a look at the West Coast, uh, United States area. We'll go ahead and kick on the all magnitudes and bring out some uh, <coughs> detailed quakes. There is that uh, red circle there in eastern, uh, looks like, yeah, eastern o Oklahoma area. Where's that by? Is that near uh, Shawnee? I know there's something else out here. Been out here a couple times. Uh, should be Seminole out here somewhere, isn't it? Maybe that's a little bit further north. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> so a pair of earthquakes taking place. Looks like uh, Quinton, Oklahoma, getting in on some action. And not for sure if these are... Well, these are definitely two distinct earthquakes because one's got uh, a timestamp of 0301. And uh, the other one, 0322, so a little bit of movement taking place out there. Uh, we can go ahead and check out the satellite view real quick and see what we have out there. No doubt fracking operations uh, quite a bit throughout the region. You can see all these little squares, uh, little roads with uh, little boxes that lead to uh, <clears throat> some type of... Um, under, underground operations there including I mean there's there's some within uh, just right next to right next to this 2.2 uh, here I'm talking just a, a few feet <clears throat> it's a pumping operation there you can't really see it in too much detail um, I'd have to pull up Google Earth but trust me those are uh, pumping operations scattered about I'm guessing this is uh, uh, Quinton it's pretty close within the vicinity of these quakes here Looks like a little, uh, pretty small town. This 2.8 struck just to the east of town, up here along the, uh, some type of, uh, hills or mountain range out there. I don't know if that's a, I've been out there a few times, but I just can't, I, 
I'm not for sure exactly where I'm at here. Yeah, so this one's striking the, uh, what do we got there? Like little ponds maybe? Right at the base of those little hills. <clears throat> but uh, regardless, still quite a bit of uh, operations out there, pumping operations throughout the land. Uh, let's head back over to, let's see here. Pretty sure I've been out there. Huh, okay. Anyway, um, yeah, it's getting off track here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Texas kicking up a little bit with their earthquake activity. A little calming down compared to, uh, when was it yesterday? I think we've seen a pretty large uptick. Latest quake, uh, or at least the largest quake in this little cluster, 2.4. Uh, just outside of Pecos, Texas. Uh, Northern California has seen a little increase in earthquake activity at the southern, <coughs> southern edge of the Cascadia subduction zone once again right there on the edge of it. Mega thrust area lock section sits up here. Uh, 2.7, 17 kilometers below surface, pretty deep. And also a 2.1 more inland. Or I should, so, should say inland up the coast a little bit. Also uh, pretty deep, 18 kilometers below surface for that quake. No, another 1.8, uh, 10 kilometers for that earthquake. And some further movement looks like near, uh, well, in the coast range here of Northern California, looks like northeast of, or north of Laytonville. So this all kind of newer activity, just kind of keep an eye on that region. <clears throat> We've seen quite a bit of activity over the last few weeks there in that area. Also, uh, a little quake north of uh, Shasta Lake, 2.7 at 18.8 kilometers. Uh, Bay Area looking kind of quiet. I mean, this is the all magnitudes here, so not a whole lot of movement aside from the cluster of quakes, which is typical for the geyser activity up here uh, north of the Bay Area. As far as the uh, tectonic movement, uh, just a little bit off of this little fault structure right here. The Calaveras Fault Zone runs up and down here <clears throat> along with the Hayward Fault. Uh, Hayward Fault's pretty quiet, but this Calaveras Fault showing some uh, microquake activity. 2.8 is about the largest quake in this little section south of San Jose. On uh, And I know there's fault systems out there, but they're not showing it here on the USGS map. Uh, Hayward Fault sits over here by about uh, six miles or so to the east. And of course the San Andreas Fault sitting over here. So a little bit of movement in between there. Um, <clears throat> what else we got? Uh, Soledad, north of Soledad, seen a 2.1, almost, almost right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault, just off to the west a little bit there. Uh, what else we got? Things in Lake Tahoe kind of calming down. Um, I don't see any more quake activity in that region, just a small little, uh, looks like a small little aftershock in that region where we did see that uh, earthquake strike a few days ago now in that area. Over here, down through Nevada, still seeing some movement, uh, not a whole lot, just some sporadic activity. And Ridgecrest area getting in on the aftershock activity still. This could continue for quite some time, no doubt. Um, an explosion, a couple explosions around the uh, <clears throat> Garlock fault structure. Not for sure why they would do something like that. It looks like it's almost right smack dab on it. If you were to run this across here, you could see that uh, explosion, 1.3 query blast. Um, yeah, kind of strange. I wouldn't be messing around down there with some um, explosions right on the, <laughs> right in the major, major seismic locked area it's so dangerous um, 1.4 in the well north of Los Angeles area into the Santa Monica mountains overall though pretty quiet throughout the uh, LA area some microquakes up here along the San Jacinto fault northern section up here that runs close into the uh, San Andreas fault but overall this is all uh, typical <laughs> typical earthquake activity uh, for the west coast out here 
Seen a little swarming going on. Octillo, California, down here in the desert. Right around the Yuha Buttes, Yuha Desert out here. It's shell beds. I'm guessing some type of old volcanic activity taking place. Um, uh, definitely desert, that's for sure. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Did have that uh, El Salvador quake there. Still kind of on the map. Should be dropping off pretty soon, I'm sure. And uh, what do we got there? That's some older earthquake activity. Really nothing new to report in the South America region, so. Let's see here, what do we got? Just looking on the seismograph, a little earthquake striking down there around the San Diego area. <coughs> I don't see it showing up yet. There was a pretty significant uh, solar storm that uh, did kick off. You can see that uh, KP index going all the way up to, uh, oh man, just about 7. Pretty significant right there. As of right now, uh, geomagnetic storm watch will remain in effect for the next 6 to 12 hours while the Earth passes through the CME enhanced solar wind stream. Uh, the BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field is beginning to shift south again, and this could help intensify activity to minor G1 level. Nothing like we've seen uh, last night. Solar activity returned to fairly quiet levels during the day on a Wednesday today. Both AR 20, uh, 2822, 2823 continued on a gradual decay trend in isolated sea flare will remain possible during the next 24 hours. So yeah, there's that uh, K index of seven. A G3 storm, pretty uh, significant from that CME that hit. And of course, the, uh, we did see a, a quite a bit of uptick in earthquake activity when that thing uh, came through, uh, before it came through and during. I've always, uh, I've always been a firm believer in the sun playing a major, major role in um, and what goes on here on Earth, you know, and that includes weather, earthquake activity, volcanic activity. So we will see no major, no major asteroids headed this way. There's some, uh, looks like some small ones. Nothing on the doomsday scale, <laughs> luckily, which is good for us. All right, folks, I'm going to call it a night. Hope everyone out there stay safe. Like I say, a lot of action picked up uh, over the last 24 hours. And, of course, during that time frame of the uh, CME, CME impact, which created the strong geomagnetic storm. We'll see, uh, see if things calm down or they continue to shift. It does seem that that 6.7 over here in the Indian Ocean. I got uh, Madagascar over here to the west. I, I want to go there. I've been looking at some pictures. It is really neat looking. Always like the, uh, the areas close to the, uh, you know, close to the rainforest and stuff like that. It's just, I mean, it's. One of these days I'll get down there. One of these days. There's a lot of places I want to visit. I think we all have those <laughs> areas, you know. Some would like to see Greenland or Antarctica or Australia. I don't know. I mean, there's, the world's a beautiful place, and there's so much to see on this in this life. Um, yeah. All right, folks. Um, I think I was saying that 6.7. seems like after that 6.7 we've seen... Uh, a lot of shifting going on over here on this side of the of the uh, planet which includes the majority of the pacific plate um, 
now was that solar storm contri- uh, uh, did that did that cause the 6.7 you know there's really no way to prove it there's no way to prove any of the um, solar activity is causing strictly causing the plate uh, plate movements out there or the increased in earthquake activity but I see it happening a lot in the past um, and I see how there's a, a lot of upticks when when we do see that solar storm really ramping up hitting earth hitting earth's magnetic field which uh the dynamics of it you know could cause um pressure differences here in the, in the plates and the inner core and and everything that has to do with the dynamics of this planet you know it's I firmly believe that uh, the solar activity does play that part into uh, producing um, significant uh, tectonic movement. Uh, let's see. All right, guys, I'm going to jump off here. Kind of tired. Almost hit 100 degrees today. It was actually 99.7. 99.7 degrees here in Northern California. Tomorrow. Looks like it's supposed to be around 99, 100 again tomorrow, or again. So I'm just, I hate it. I do not like this heat, man. It's too early, too early for 100 degree temperatures like that. Early May, come on, get out of town. All right, guys, so what do we got here? Up in up in Alaska, a little 2.5 kicking up, kind of deep. You can see it raised up off the globe about 80 three kilometers below the surface yeah I don't I don't think we're done seeing uh, some some further movement up there just too many uh, been too many telltale signs of uh, <coughs> of a lot of plate shifting going on up there in that region of the world all right guys have a good night before I lose my voice take care stay safe out there we'll chat you guys another time peace out